Hi, how are you? What's with the Philadelphia Tribune? How are you today? Good, how are you doing? We're great. Very good, very good. Interesting topic. Um, what made you want to dive in? You know what I mean? Uh, it is it is a um, a topic that is, for the longest time, has been debated, at, but it's getting a little bit more light that it's affecting a different group of people that than, than we're normally used to seeing when it comes to like addiction and that type of thing. So can you explain to me a little bit what drew you to this subject and what made you want to make this project? Well, let's... Barry, since it all began with your book, why don't we start with, with you? Well, you know, uh, I was drawn to it as a reporter at the New York Times in 2001, in, in large part because at that point, it was a very different drug addiction story. It was a story about addiction being caused by the pharmaceutical industry, by the legal manufacturers and legal sellers of drugs, and, and, it, and it was a story about how an epidemic of drug abuse wasn't being created by you know, gangs or street dealers, but by prescriptions written by doctors, often well-meaning doctors, who didn't realize that this drug that was being promoted to them as safe from abuse and unlikely to cause addiction was going to cause a tidal wave of abuse and, and devastation for many of the pain patients to whom they were prescribing it. Um, for me, uh, and, and I was very fortunate to, to be able to, to join Barry in what has been a, you know, two decade uh, quest to get this story as widely disseminated as possible um, because this is a massive betrayal of public trust. Um, you know, this is a, a medical uh, conspiracy uh, that, that killed a lot of people and created, uh, I think, a, for us as storytellers, an opportunity to uh, to tell a story about, about victimization that is not dissimilar to other drug epidemics in this country. It's the same playbook. It's just legal, which is, 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 is a horrifying idea. And what it means is there are two systems of justice. There's justice for really rich people and justice for everybody else. And there is a version where the perpetrators sail off into the sunset and on piles of money and never really face recrimination and it happens again. The lesson being that if you have enough money, you can get away with it. And if you look in something that we were very clear about drawing a parallel between the opioid epidemic and the crack epidemic in the, in the mid 80s, it's the same deal, except we're not imprisoning people. And, you know, we're blaming again, we're blaming the victims. And again, we're, you know, we're treating it like a law and order issue when it's a healthcare crisis. And people didn't stand a chance in either case because there was no, no one was looking out for them. No, there were no, none of the government agencies that should have been monitoring this we're doing it properly so you know it's it's a it's an important uh show it's important that people see it well one of the the things in this country is that uh, health care professionals people who are into treating patient care right what is the that shall not do harm yep it seems as though pharmaceutical companies and lobbyists dictate what we as consumers and what we as patients get versus what the healthcare officials will say, hey, this isn't good. Or anytime someone says, you know, and they're not in a majority or they're not in the money bank, so to say, says, you know, this is a problem. We need to look at it. 
how much of this is, you know, um, we have elective officials who are not necessarily invested in our well-being. How much of this is driven by, as you can see, like how the drug came to be when there was a red flag, you know, instead of just stopping it and sticking with the instincts and saying, hey, this cannot go out into the market. It was circumvented due to the fact of money and, and privilege and things like that. How much of that is, is something that is the main reason why we have these types of issue? Well, you know, uh, the story that I tell in Painkiller, the story about the Sackler family is in some ways about Arthur Sackler, who in the 1950s essentially created the entire industry of marketing prescription drugs. He was the person who kind of corrupted the medical profession, who turned doctors into shills for drug companies, who created this world where doctors were not necessarily acting in our best interest, but in the interest of drug companies that were putting money into their pockets. And while he died before OxyContin was ever sold, his nephew, Richard Sackler, oversaw the marketing of this powerful and potentially very addicting painkiller. And many of the marketing techniques that were used to convince doctors to prescribe these drugs were the same exact techniques that his uncle, Arthur Sackler, had developed you know, five decades earlier. So, so what this story and, and what this show is in many ways about is the seduction and dismemberment of the medical prof profession, of the people that were supposed to be our gatekeepers, our protectors by the pharmaceutical industry and these very forces that were put into effect by people like Arthur Sackler. 100%. Uh, also, we don't, um, the other thing is, uh, I always suspected it, but this series kind of confirms it as well as your reporting, is a lot of times when you see these testimonials, right? We don't ever, um, you know, I mean, obviously I have a very curious mind. I'm a journalist, so I'm in the business of asking questions. So I don't take things blindly, but the average person doesn't ever say like, who are these doctors? Is this even an appropriate type of doctor that should be commenting on this, right? And when sometimes we find that they're not even medical doctors, or you know, in this particular case, you find that they're not real doctors. How much of that is not regulated? You know, um, we know when we see the commercials, you'll say this is the drug that cures, this is cures that, boom, boom, boom. But be aware, these are all the side effects. And you're like, dear God, I mean, what's the purpose of taking it? But when you look at before print advertisements, these pamphlets, it's very shiny, you know, you're in the business of sales. Yeah. How much of that is not regulated to make sure that people aren't doing false testimonials or if it is a legitimate doctor, that that doctor is in a position to comment on these conditions? Because if you're a psychologist, you wouldn't want to talk about cardiovascular things and vice versa. Well, my, my rule of thumb, and Eric, I don't know what yours is, but my rule of thumb is not to believe anything. My rule of thumb is to do your own research, be your own guide, be your own advocate. Because one of the reasons this entire catastrophe happened is that we put our trust into people who didn't have our best interests right. in mind. I think that, um, you know, nowadays you can find anybody who will say anything. You know, there is, you will always find someone to provide the testimonial you need for whatever you're selling. Um, the thing that was, that's horrifying about this, and I think why it, it hit so many poor people the way that it did, was the relationship between a patient and a doctor is, is sacred, but more specifically, for a lot of these communities, a doctor is the only authority figure that they that that they interact with. It's, it's very likely the only 
college educated person that they interface with. Um, it doesn't mean that they're qualified to, to, to treat or to prescribe medication, but that d- dynamic already it, has been established. And when you're in pain, you know, I like to say that no one ever gets a second opinion on good news. If you think historically, when you go get a second opinion, it's because you've been told something you don't want to hear. If someone says, you can take this, it's safe, and it'll treat your pain, you're going to go with it. And, and, you know, when you get into the legalities of, you know, what's been claimed, the, the efficacy of a drug, the, you know, there, there are... There are workarounds for almost anything, and the power of money and influence, and you know these for these pharmaceutical companies, the relationship with the government regulators. You know you can get away with saying a lot, and and then not saying a lot. So I I'm I sort of subscribe to the Barry idea of you know I don't really trust anything. Um, you know, I'm, I certainly am not going to trust a, a medical, you know, a marketing pamphlet, but occasionally I'll encounter something that works phenomenally well and, you know, and, and I'm grateful for it. So I'm not anti, you know, pharmaceuticals, but I think there is such a, an irresponsible uh, approach born of, you know, Arthur Sackler and people like him and, and perfected for lack of a better word by people like Richard Sackler and, 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 and others, uh, where it became about sales, only sales and anything that hindered or hampered sales. Let's see if we can avoid that. We'll put that in the back. You know, it's the definition of fine print. Absolutely. I want to thank you so much. Thank you. I think this is really important because I think, um, it's a conversation that we need to have, you know, who gets to control our care and who gets to decide what we consume in our bodies and also makes a strong case about how we need to hold our elected officials and certain, you know, departments a little bit more accountable about what they're willing to, to allow to push through and to ask more questions. And, and last, I think as patients, we also, we always say, you know, we hire we're very disconcerting who works on our car, who works on our home, yeah. but mm-hmm. we're, we're you're not as disconcerting who works on our bodies. And we have the right to say no, and we have the right to, to seek, you know, someone who has our best interest in, in mind. But I think this is a much overdue conversation on healthcare and, and what is allowed to, to be put, pushed out on the market. So I really Thank you appreciate very much. this program. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Time. Have a good day. Thanks a lot. You do as well. Bye-bye. Sure.